looking over the blue sheets in our chapter 6 test, I see this is one of the kinds of things that many students had some problems with. And it was to, if they give you a single point and they give you the slope, what would be the line that goes through it? And what would be the equation of that line? And then they want you to graph it. So the strategy, and they want you to give it in slope-intercept form. Now you could use the point-slope form, but here we're going to feature the slope-intercept form. So what information do we have as we substitute it into this formula? Well, we know y is 2. We know our slope is 3. That's the m. And we know our x value is negative 1. What we don't know is the y-intercept. So we'll just put that here as the letter b. Now as we solve this, we get 2 equals negative 3 plus b. And to solve for b now, we have to take the negative 3, transpose it. On this side, it becomes a positive 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So our b is 5. So now we know our slope. y equals 3x. We have to put the x there, and our y-intercept is 5. Now when we go to graph this, uh, you know, and you're not physically putting it in, you're using the software to put it in. I would graph the positive 5, that's your y-intercept, that would be a dot right there. And then if you have to put it in as a ordered pair, that would be 0, comma 5. And then your slope now is 3 over 1. So we said we would go over 1 and then up 3, 1, 2, 3. Now there's the second point. We only need two points, and if you had to put that point in, that point would be a 1 over 1, and then 8. Now once you put those two points in, the graph forms, and you have then, with one point and the slope, found the equation now, remember, when you do the equation, you don't put the 1 under the slope. And you put it in slope-intercept, and you've also made the graph. Now, another kind of question they might ask about this is, here is one point, and there is the slope. And now they want you to graph it. So, what you would do in that case is you would graph this point, negative 1, 2. So negative 1, 2 is right there. Now, you then say, well, what is the slope from this particular point? Well, the slope, again, is 3 over 1. So you're going to go over 1 and then up 3. And that, in this case, happens to bring you to your y-intercept. And then, of course, you just make the line. And of course, once you do it, then the line forms. Now, another type of example you might have is they give you the graph, and then they'll want you to write the equation of that line in slope-intercept form. And in some cases, they're asking you to put it in point-slope form, which is this here. Now, hopefully you're familiar with these names of formulas by this time. So, what do you do? Well, as you scan and look at this graph, what's your y-intercept there? Well, it's 5. And what's your slope? Well, you don't know the slope. So, what you have to do is do some figuring. Now notice, it's crossing there, and it's also crossing there, and it's positive slope. So if we count it this way, there are 8 units this way, 
and five units this way, so our run is eight, our rise is five, it's positive. So our slope is five eighths. And right from the graph, again, keeping this as background, you're able to put it. Now, suppose they want you to put it in point slope form. Well, again, using a similar technique, you know your slope. We figured that out. That's going to be 5 eighths. Now, what is your x value here? Well, your x value there is 0. So this is going to be x minus 0 is just x. So over here, this, since you're using the y-intercept, the ordered pair is 0, 5. You're just putting the 0 there for the x, this 0 for the x. So this side is this. Now, in the formula, what is the value of our y. Now remember, our y is here, it's 5. So it goes in, even though it's positive here, it's going to go into the formula because there's a negative sign in the formula as this. And I see lots of students getting confused on something like this. So remember, it doesn't become yours, this technique until you studied and mastered it. And we'll wind this up then as a short primer of graphing for chapter 6.